Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Voodoo Garden. My name is Ray. I will be your host, and this is my lovely co-host today. This is what's called a Casa Banana. Yeah, <laughs> I have to say it slow because it's not that you can't understand, it's just that I tend to talk fast sometimes, and people ask me, what did you just say? This is a Casa Banana, or Casa Banana, and uh, I believe it's a fruit. I'm pretty sure it's a fruit. It smells like a fruit. Actually, you know what it smells like to me? It smells like an apple. A fresh apple and it didn't have this smell up until a couple weeks ago this is something that I grew outside in my raised beds hey smell my casa banana yeah it makes you happy didn't it yeah Roscoe likes this smell too but um last year in my raised bed the long raised bed over on the right the one where I was supposed to grow enough food for one guy yeah you know the big failure well I had this uh, seed that somebody sent me and I planted it indoors. It sprouted and started to vine. I thought, ooh, cool. So I took it outside and I planted it in the raised bed. I didn't know what it was. I figured, well, maybe it's a squash or cucumber. Well, the vine went nuts and it impressed me so much. I let it grow and it went crazy and it, it went nuts. It took over the tomatoes, ripped apart the tomatoes, went over to the other side, found the prax cherries. Tomatoes started ripping those apart too. And it went all over everything, hither and yon, back and forth and back and forth. And um, it finally put out a couple fruits. This is the largest of the fruits. And I let this ripen as much as possible on the line, but it didn't ripen at all. It only got green. And I had to pick it in the fall because frost was coming and I knew this wasn't gonna survive because everybody told me it's tropical. So I brought it inside, I set it on the counter, and this thing, this Leviathan, um, has been sitting on my counter since I believe October. October, November, December, January, February. Four freaking months! <laughs> This thing just sat there like a big green lump. And in the last couple weeks, it is starting to, uh, to ripen. It's turning a little bit yellow. Check this out. Well, it's got this weird little blemish, but I don't know what that is. It's not soft or anything. It's hard as the rest of the skin. Everything is very hard, but uh, I don't know if you can tell. The skin is starting to turn like this yellowish green. It's got like, freckles. Yeah, isn't it cute? Little freckles. Uh, this is what's called a casa banana, and it's starting to ripen. Um, I can tell what, because it's starting to turn yellow. I know nothing about these other than when it's fully ripe, it's supposed to be this uh, blaze orange, and it'll smell really good and soften up just a little bit, but it's not quite there yet. I call it the schmoo. Uh, <laughs> Mike said, what is that thing called? I said, it's a schmoo, and that's what we call it now because it's kind of oblong at the bottom and narrow at the top. If you don't know what a schmoo is, Look it up on Google. It's for older people. We used to watch the cartoon on TV. Shmoo. Hey, sniff the shmoo butt. <laughs> I got so many strange things from people. I got the shmoo, the Casa Banana, and uh, I grew that. And um, I don't put the people's names by it. Uh, somebody asked me, actually more than one person asked me a couple years ago, Ray, why don't you just take the tags and put the person's name on it who sent you the seeds? That way you don't have to say, I don't know who sent it to me. Well. I actually tried that. That was a good idea. I tried that, but the hitch in that plan was I don't grow everybody's seeds all the time and I, I get so much stuff in the mail, you have no idea how much stuff I get in the mail. It's an incredible. I don't ask for anything, but people want to send things because they're very generous and uh, they want to see if I can grow some of the stuff that they enjoy growing. And uh, so I put the seeds aside and then I forget who sends it to me. I should probably write it on the envelope, but I'm kind of busy. So. Um, uh, I hope it's good enough that people will see their stuff and go, ah, that's my stuff, without uh, me actually having to say their name. This came in the mail too. Uh, people that saw this on my Facebook, they thought I had a little doll hand. Well, this isn't a doll hand at all. This is a, a Chia zombie arm. Yeah, it's a Chia zombie arm. And uh, you can get these usually around Christmas. Remember Chia? Yeah, ever since I was a kid, I heard that stupid commercial, cha -cha 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 -cha. and uh, they would do the Chia commercials. And it started out with the Chia head, and Chia Scooby, and Chia everything. Now you can get Chia zombie arms. And this came in the mail the other day. Weird stuff. I don't even question things that come in the mail, and you know I'm never surprised. <laughs> I used to be surprised, and now, no, just another day in the Voodoo Garden. Uh, but when I got this, I thought, you know what, I don't want to grow all kinds of chia all over it. I think this is a cool little decoration for here. So now I got my little zombie arm in the, the pot. A lot of this uh, th that goes into the voodoo garden, this is all kind of an experience. It's not just growing one plant to get one thing. One person asked me once, why are you growing a pineapple? Remember the pineapple I had grown inside? He asked me, why, do you, why are you growing a pineapple? I said, because I enjoy growing a pineapple. 
And then a, a follow-up question came, how long does it take for it to produce an actual pineapple? I said about 18 months. And his response was, you know, this is his response, and he's entitled to it, but he said, that's too long, I can't wait that long. And I thought, well, I'm not waiting for anything. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. It's not the destination, it's the journey. That's the whole idea behind the voodoo garden. This is a, a fun thing to do. It's not a matter of results, and especially out in the garden either. I mean, if I wanted a pineapple, I can take $2.50 and go to Walmart and buy myself a pineapple. The fact is, I like to grow the pineapple. I like to watch it from, you know, planting the top like I did on that video, how to plant a pineapple. You know, that video got like hundreds and hundreds of thousands, a couple hundred thousand views, I think. But anyway, it was one of my most popular videos and I had no intention of making it a popular video. I was just having a good time one day and I thought, ooh, I'll just shove this into the soil and it did good. So a lot of people out there in the world are now growing this ridiculously huge plant because I uh, did it myself. And it was be, and they're enjoying the process of growing it and, and that was the whole thing. I grew it as a small one, it got bigger, it got bigger, it got incredibly big, and then it got, just got way, way beyond big. But um, it was fun to grow. I got a pineapple off of that, I planted the top from that baby pineapple and grew it again. So the pineapple plant that I had in here up until a few months ago was a second generation pineapple plant. It's fun. And uh, like for instance, when we're out, outdoors growing potatoes in our garden, you know, you can, you can get a bag of potatoes for a couple bucks at the grocery store. They're not expensive. And, uh, but we spend a couple bucks or more on potato sets, you know, the little potatoes and stuff, and we plant them, we invest our time, our energy, uh, soil into these. And if you figured out the cost, you know, what our time is worth, these are very expensive potatoes that we're eating out of the garden. It's not so much that we're growing for economy, some of us might be. But for me, I'm growing for fun. Yeah, I get food out of it and that's really nice, but you know, in all honesty, I can go buy food a lot cheaper than I can grow it in my garden. I do this because I enjoy it and it's good for my health in the way of uh, sanity, in the way of mental, you know, and physical, you know, you get out there and you dig in the dirt. It's worth its weight in gold as far as I'm concerned. But all these weird little nuances of growing uh, is what make the voodoo garden and what, what makes my uh, gardening inside and outside worthwhile. I got this little weird thing from somebody and then I got this little robot. Remember Lost in Space? Yeah, that, that thing. Well, you know, Robbie the Robot. I think it was Robbie the Robot. But anyway, it was that robot that said, Warning Will Robinson. Somebody sent me one of those. I got sock monkeys. I got a little voodoo thing. I don't, I don't think you guys have ever seen this. This is something that's been on the shelf for a long time. Come on, little voodoo. This is the original decoration for the Voodoo Garden, and uh, I've had this for many, many years. I don't remember where I got it. Uh, it's lost to the ages, the origin of this thing. But doesn't he look ridiculous? Yeah, he's this little weird surfer kind of shaman doll thing with a little uh, grass skirt and uh, weird grass hair. And I think it's fantastic. I have had this thing for years. It's hand carved. and. It's really bizarre and kind of creepy, but you know what? It's part of the voodoo garden. It's part of the little things that make this whole puzzle come together for me. Okay, back you go. Anyway, that's part of the, the stuff uh, of the voodoo garden. It's, it's not so much a matter of results for me. It's just a matter of trying failing, trying, succeeding, uh, seeing what's new, seeing what's different, all of that stuff. And I think that's why people tune in uh, a lot. They do want to get a little bit of information on growing things, but they also enjoy the experience. And that is where the fun is. You know, this thing, speaking of experiences, you know, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour today. I promised you I would, and I always keep my promises. Um, this thing here, let me hold this up. You can't really experience it until you see it from the top down. This is belladonna. Yeah, this is that ultra poisonous plant that I grew from a seed. I ordered the seeds online. It's called belladonna atropa. And uh, I'm going to give you a close up view of this because you really can't appreciate it unless you come right up and look her in the face. The leaf structure on this is beautiful. Dark green, huge leaves, and the growth pattern is a spreading but upright type of growth. It was originally growing upright, and of course, you know me, I pruned it, and it goes out to the side. Once you prune it once, that's really all the pruning I've ever done. And now, it, it, you know, it goes out sort of like the growth pattern of detour or moonflower, and it starts to put out these flowers, 
which are not really showstoppers, but they're beautiful in a way when you look at them up close. Now I'm going to get you up close. You can tell me what you think. This is a belladonna flower. And uh, all I do is I got to stick my little finger in there and I tickle her and it gets the pollen all over the flower on the inside. And if I'm lucky, she'll produce out of this when the flower falls off, she'll produce a little, little bitty green berry the size of a BB and then it'll get larger and larger until it's the size of a blueberry, but it'll be the, the most dark purple blackish waxy looking uh, fruit you'll ever see. It's really beautiful. Of course, you know, it's very poisonous, but then again, like I tell everybody, I try not to fall and, and end up with a plant in my mouth. So uh, everything's pretty safe. And Rascal doesn't, he doesn't care for these plants. You know, we have another poisonous one right down next to it. This is the one where they get ricin, you know, the poison. This is a castor bean plant. And the castor bean plant has a beautiful leaf structure. This one's been growing for months and months and months, gosh, almost a year, inside the Voodoo Garden, I think. And I keep pruning it back, it keeps growing, and let me move over here a little bit. Right on top, we have the flower cluster with, of course, the seed pods. The seed pods are these thorny looking things. It's got another one over here. And then as soon as the seed pods get ripe, they split, like the one on the top, you can see it split. And then Pops right open and the castor beans fall to the ground. And uh, it's a fun thing to grow. And uh, like I said, it's poisonous. But then again, as long as you use some common sense and uh, you make sure that nobody shoves it in their face. See? Hey. Oh, there you are. Look at you not shoving a poisonous plant in your mouth. <laughs> He's not interested in these. So I'm perfectly fine. I trust him. I trust myself. Here's a new addition to the Voodoo Garden. This is a mini rose. And uh, you can uh, get these after Valentine's Day or after uh, some other holidays. Uh, you can get them at uh, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, other stores. And they have a mark down just to get rid of them. And, and you can get them for a couple bucks. This is, I believe, a mini rose bush. And when I got it, of course, it was in one of those Valentine pots, you know, that look really cheesy and tacky. Well, anyway, I took it, uh, the wrapper off, took it out of the pot, transplanted it in here in my soil mix of the Quar for, uh, Vermiculite and Worm castings, and I gave it the vinegar water to water it, of course, because that will keep the soil acidic, because my mixture is not acidic. I would have to use peat moss, and I don't have any yet. So I give it the vinegar water, and it seems to like that. I trimmed a lot of the uh, leaves off towards the bottom to give it stems and also to give it some airflow because you want to make sure it gets airflow down there, otherwise they're very susceptible to fungus. And uh, yeah, they can get blight type fungus and all kinds of other weird stuff just like any other plant, but look, isn't that beautiful? And uh, no, this one doesn't have any smell. Most roses that you buy at the store, especially these mini ones, they don't have smell. And that's the only downside to it, but it's a beauty. And uh, I'm going to grow it here in the Voodoo Garden just because I can. I figure, what the heck, I've never grown a rose in here, I might as well give it a shot. This one, I don't know if you saw it last week. This is a uh, peace lily, and I had one before, but it died. It just dropped dead, and I think it's because my soil went alkaline, and of course, they don't like that. But uh, I got this little tiny one in a four-inch pot, and I got it for a couple bucks at Lowe's. Yeah, just a couple dollars, and it's flowering. It's doing wonderful. Peace lilies, they love to have slightly moist soil, but they also like to have it dry out just a little bit, not bone dry, just a little bit, and then water them again give a medium light, they don't like direct sunlight, and uh, that's it. Don't overwater these things, otherwise they'll just start drooping their, their leaves and it's all over with. They are not an aquatic plant, folks. I know they look like they would require a lot of water, but they really don't. And then, as these flowers come out, they're probably not going to produce seeds or anything, but they do produce a lot of pollen that happens to fall all over the place. As soon as the flower starts turning brown, cut the flower off down to where it meets the actual leaf and toss it away. And it'll continue growing and continue flowering pretty much constantly. Sometimes it'll take a break to recharge, but then it goes right back to flowering. And these things get quite large. And my arrowhead plant, I think I, I've shown this once when I first got it. It was this little, little bitty thing. I put it in a pot. And you know one thing I noticed about this, I don't know if I'll be able to get in there close enough or you'll be able to see it, but 
I put some dirt up around the, the base of this, but what was happening is there were some uh, thick roots coming out of the base of the plant and uh, pushing down into the soil. This thing really, really wants to put out more roots. So eventually, I gotta, I gotta believe that this thing is gonna get root bound probably in the next couple months. For, for some reason, it really likes the soil mix that I have here, and it's putting out extra roots, and I guess that's a good thing. So this one, you're gonna see this one do really, really well. I have a feeling about this. There, there's definitely a good feeling about this plant. I've seen these get about maybe three feet tall and three feet across. They can get monstrous, and they are beautiful, but, but, they are a spider mite magnet. Be aware, folks. If you have one of these things, always look right here where the leaf meets the stem and flip it over because generally in the summertime, you're gonna see spider mites on these things. You gotta keep an eye on these. You can't take them outside and bring them back in. That's, spider, that's just asking for spider mites. This thing will never see the outside. Bright light, but not direct sunlight. Slightly moist soil, let it dry out a little bit but it likes rich, well-drained soil. It's called an arrowhead. You know, up from the arrowhead, there's this little thing that doesn't really look like much, but this is my experiment. I was wanting to see if I could grow a plant in hair uh, because the goats were shedding. I was brushing out the goats one day and there was all these big blobs of goat hair, and I thought, I wonder if I can use this for anything. So I mixed the hair 50-50 with uh, my potting mix and I planted an egg plant in it. Yeah. I know a lot of you are thinking, but Ray, you hate eggplant. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> but I had to see what was going to grow, and that was the nearest seed. So I grabbed a seed, and I threw it in there, and so it's growing in hair. Yeah, this is one of my weird experiments. I hope it works. Oh, by the way, behind it is a Schefflera, or it's also called an Arbacola or Hawaiian Schefflera. This was in a little pot when I first bought it, a six-inch pot. I transplanted it into a 10-inch pot, like the arrowhead, and then it, it roots hit the side of the pot within a month. So I had to transplant it again into this big old huge, I think it's a 14 inch pot. Yeah, these, these plants can get huge and I used a couple strings to pull them apart because they were a little bit too clustered together. And it only cost me, I think $3. Yeah, this thing is gonna look beautiful here in the Buddha garden. I love the leaf structure on these things. Up on the table here, I don't know if I've shown this for a while, but I'm gonna show you right now. This is called a naranjilla, or a naranjilla, gia, I don't know what it is. It's a tree that puts out fruit that looks sort of like a persimmon, but look at the tops of the leaves. See those spikes? And look at the spikes underneath it. Ugh. It looks like a lychee tomato. A lychee tomato is this tomato that just does not want to be touched. But uh, this is going to grow into a tree, and it is doing wonderful. I grew this from a seed somebody sent me, so whoever sent me the naranjilla seeds, thank you. I'm going to be growing this in the Voodoo Garden. I don't know where it's going to go or how big it's going to get, but for right now, it's doing really, really good. This elephant in the room keeps getting comments, so I'm going to give you another close-up of it. This is the spider plant. I received, I think it was two or three itty-bitty uh, babies, and uh, they came in the mail in an envelope uh, during the winter, and I thought they were dead, but I planted them, and they grew into this. <laughs> and it put out a couple babies, and I took the babies and put them in there. So now I got about, I don't know, five plants. But they keep putting out leaves, and, they get, and I have literally hundreds and hundreds. These are not just leaves down here. These are actual new plants, see? Each one of these is a new plant. And I could plant these in pots, but I just don't have the amount of pots needed. No, I didn't just bring everything from the back to the front. See, this goes all the way around. And I took off a few babies and I put it up here. See, this is my shelf. It was a little bit higher, the shelf, and it really wasn't serving any purpose. So what I did was I brought it down about a foot and I planted spider plants in a half a dozen pots here. And I figure eventually these things are gonna grow and they're gonna waterfall more babies down off the side. Isn't that gonna be a nice look? Yeah, I got those and that pregnant onion over there and all my little knick-knack thingies on the wall. And then up here, I usually have a bulb up here, but I'm using for other purposes while I'm filming. This is the Wandering Jew, another plant where I've received a couple little half-dead cuttings from somebody. So whoever sent the wa Wandering Jew cuttings, this is it. This is really, <laughs> really kind of beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, once you get a Wandering Jew, Jew going, they don't stop. They wander. They wander a lot. And uh, yeah, this one's going to get 
really nice. And if it ever starts to die, they're one of the easiest plants to take cuttings from. You just take it, throw it in dirt, and boom, you got a whole new plant. Hey there, Mr. Impatient. <laughs> you know, I just thought of something. I thought of something while I was getting ready to film this episode. This uh, episode of the Voodoo Garden is coming out on Friday. But later on today, in a couple hours, I'm going to go out and film the Praxis walkabout, you know, the, the, the field trip that I talked about. Well, the field trip episode is going to come out in a few days. This is Friday. No, this is Saturday. I'm sorry, Saturday. So I'm going to go film the Praxis episode. It's going to come out on Monday in a couple days. And then this Voodoo Garden episode is going to come out the Friday after that. So right now, I have no idea what I'm going to be filming on the, on the Praxis channel. I never do. I just basically take the camera out there, open my mouth, and start talking. I, re I rarely plan anything out. So literally, I have no idea what that episode is going to be. But you have already watched the episode on the Praxis channel uh, like five days before this one ever came out. So you already know what I filmed and as of right now when I'm sitting here, I have no idea. So you know, you're actually looking into my future right now and you know what I did before I know it. That's weird. I just thought of that while I was getting ready today and just blew my mind. It blew my mind so much that uh, I'm uh, grabbing my shirt. I'm trying to figure out what kind of shirt to wear because I got a a million shirts. I got a, a, a whole aisle of shirts upstairs, but I only wear like six because I have six favorite shirts and I don't like wearing the other ones and I can't throw them away. So yeah, so I'm holding on to this shirt and I'm walking around and it hits me of that weird, you know, time travel type thing. And so I'm walking around the house thinking about this with a shirt in my hand and I forgot to get my shirt on and I started coming downstairs and then I realized I don't have a shirt on. <laughs> so. I had to go back upstairs, put my shirt on, put the microphone on. Yeah, I'd have been sitting here with my shirt in my hand talking to you guys. Oh, one of these days is probably going to happen as I get older and I lose my mind. But oh, it's a good day. It's a, it's a really good day. We got to get outside. I think I'm done here. Boy, I just love the smell of that thing. I mean, I, I don't know what this is going to taste like. I have no idea what this monster is going to taste like. But you know what? It smells really good and that is paying for itself. So uh, as long as it doesn't rot, I'm going to be getting seeds from this Casa Banana and I got to grow this again someday. It takes a long time to grow. And uh, of course, there were people that told me, Ray, you can't grow this because it takes too long to grow. And I looked online and they said, uh, it takes so many months to grow. Well, I grew this in Iowa where I'm not supposed to be able to grow it and I got it to fruit. I do a lot of things I'm not supposed to be able to do and I really like that. Because the more people tell me I can't do something, you can't get flowers or fruit from a, uh, the dragon cactus, you're not going to get fruit from that, you can't do this, you can't do that. There are people that told me I can't grow a pineapple inside, I can't, can't grow tomatoes inside. So many people are telling me what I can't do, and then I do it. I don't do it just to prove them wrong, I just do it anyway. I mean, I'm just dancing to my own song here, and uh, there are so many people that just don't believe it, and I don't know why they just don't enjoy themselves. and hop on board and go for the ride because it really is a fun ride here in the Voodoo Garden. I, it is a good time for all of us. And uh, if you're not really enjoying yourself, I think you just need to relax, take a deep breath, sniff the Casa Banana every now and then, and you'll realize that it can be fun. It's not a matter of the destination. We'll all get there, but it's a matter of the ride. You know, when, when we're on our way over there, that's the fun part for me. I got to get going. I got things to do. I got to go make that video so that you'll see it before I film, the, before I do this video. <laughs> I'll talk to you all later. Thank you for joining me in the Voodoo Garden. I really do appreciate it. This is Ray and Tiny R and Casa Banana. We're out of here. Okay. Okay, buddy. Let's go. Yeah, I know. You're impatient. You're so impatient.